Indirect lighting is the effect of light bouncing around off objects in the scene and is particularly important in interior scenes. It's one of those things that used to take a lot of render time, so various things such as ambient light were included to provide a faster render at the expense of realism and quality. But one of the things I'm trying to stress in this particular series is that the computing power is now available so that these better results can be achieved within a reasonable timescale. I've set up this scene to demonstrate indirect lighting, and it consists of a room box with a section removed from the ceiling and a sphere sitting on the floor. And if I go to the director's camera, you can see the sphere sitting on the floor there, the camera just within the walls and a single light coming down from the outside. And also within the scene, I've set a background color to a pale blue to mimic the effect of the skylight. So if we go to the main camera, I'm just gonna do a control R to render that scene. It renders very quickly, but you can see there's no detail within the room at all. And this is without skylight or indirect light turned on. The direct light is coming in, illuminating a square on the floor and just a very small section of that sphere, but you can't really even tell that it's a sphere because everything else is in darkness. If I turn skylight on, which we looked at in the last part, and render again, then we're getting more detail into the room. You can see that it's now lighting up around the sphere, but the shadows are very dark and you're getting no light up on the ceiling because it doesn't have a view of the sky and there's no reflected light coming up. But if we turn on indirect light, you'll see a considerable difference. So if we render again, it takes a little longer to calculate the lighting, but the actual render is still pretty fast. And now we're getting the light reflected from the floor up to the ceiling, so that's brighter. We're getting a nice dimming of light within the corners, which is what you would expect. The shadows around the sphere are now not as black and intense because light is being reflected into it. And we're even getting a light patch on the bottom of the sphere from the light that's coming in, hitting the floor in this bright section and reflecting back up onto the sphere. And this is by far the most realistic of the lighting effects. If we turn off the skylight, you can see we still get a reasonable result just from the direct light and then that reflecting up into the room. So whereas for external scenes, skylight is probably more important than indirect light, once we move indoors, indirect light is the more important of the two. Although in this particular scene, obviously the combination of the two produces the most realistic result. Incidentally, if I turn off gamma, you can see the resulting image is not nearly as good. You're getting much higher contrast between light and dark areas. And that's killing a lot of the realism. And one of the reasons that I recommend always using gamma is the lighting effects are much more easily controlled and much more realistic with gamma switched on. Note that the whole scene is still rendering in under a minute. So again, that's without gamma. And it still looks as though a lot of the room is in shadow despite the sunlight and the indirect light. We're not getting the lighting effect that you would expect to see. I'm just going to abort that and turn gamma back on and do a final render. So you can see the difference the gamma makes in this particular scene and how indirect light really adds to the realism that you get within the shading and the lighting. And it's still quite fast to render. And there we have our final scene.